Hey everyone, my name is Davey, and today I'm going to be building a complete gaming console using one of these Raspberry Pi 3s. You could use any Raspberry Pi as long as it's a Model B, but you're going to get the best performance out of the 3. I'll also be using one of these retro gaming cases. Now this one was sent to me just last night, and they sent it for free so I could make this video. But there are links in the comments if you wanted to pick one up for yourself. They seem like a pretty good deal, but I haven't gotten a chance to test them out yet, so let's go ahead and put this thing together. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we're dealing with here. Looks like it comes with its own screwdriver, so that's nice. Yeah. And these look like some basic instructions. And here's the case itself. It looks pretty solid. It definitely isn't one of the like 3D printed type cases that has the you know the printing lines. It's all pretty smooth. Looks like it's got this uh the screws that come with it. This little USB hub, which is pretty cool. Oh, and the Ethernet. Uh, it's going to forward the Ethernet from our Pi. And here's the, the jack that's going to plug into the actual Pi itself. And then into the USB on the Pi. This one I'm guessing is going to go into the GPIO pins. Check this out. Yeah, it does for the power interfacing. So it looks like what's going to happen is this USB plug right here is going to forward all the Pi's USB into this hub. And this GPIO is going to do all of the like reset and shut down power on commands and then of course this is just going to forward the ethernet through to this jack so it all fits nicely together well that seems easy enough to install let's see how the pi fits into it i can see already it's got a hole for the hdmi right here and one for the audio audio protrudes, so I think it's going to want to go into that, but I have to get these cords out of the way. Should just plop right in there. Oh, you know what? I have my SD card in there. That's not going to make it easy. Oh yeah, there we go. So then this is supposed to plug into one of these USB ports. Not sure if I should have done that first. I think I have it upside down. Poop, there we go. And then this is going to forward to the Ethernet. That's going to have to come around. Actually, that cable might have been why it wasn't fitting in there. So get that in there. That's good. Make sure these fit down so I can close the case. Cool. So then this, uh, I'm not sure which direction that's going to plug in. <laughs> Check the picture again. Looks like the cable with the black strip on it is going to be facing inward. So it should plug in like this. 
I can line these up. Yeah. So I think that's all the actual interfacing that has to be done. And then, oh, the fan, right. We probably don't even need the fan, to be honest. Uh, unless we're playing any crazy games. I mean, I guess you can use a Pi 3 to emulate like a, a PlayStation 1, in which case the fan might be necessary. The fan is going to go into this little power strip right there. You could probably use that for other stuff too if you didn't want to have the fan on. So then the whole case comes together. Make sure all the cords are out of the way so I don't pinch anything. And yeah, looks good. There's a little thing on the bottom here. doesn't connect to anything. I wonder if it's maybe just to store extra USB cards. I guess that's kind of cool. You could have different operating systems. If you didn't want to use it for like a gaming console, you could put an actual uh, Raspbian installation SD card in there and switch out for whatever you want to use it any given time. All right, so it's all put together. Except for the screws. I gotta figure out how these screws are gonna go in there. Looks like there's four big ones. I imagine those are gonna be the ones that go on the outside. Oh, actually, some of the screws are going to go on the inside to hold the Raspberry Pi in place, it looks. Probably these small ones. These things are already held in place. Let's see if I can screw one of these in there. There we go. So, got everything screwed together now. Looks pretty nice. Decent little case. This little front part slides open to expose these two USB ports, which I think you could use like your controllers if you wanted to. Um, two other USB ports you could use for whatever. You'd put a USB stick in there and keep all your game ROMs on it, for instance. Looks like I didn't quite screw that in flush. I need to redo that. Anyway, this one is your ethernet port for your networking. You can actually have the Raspberry Pi on your local network and move games to and from it like that, which is pretty convenient. And see how this little SD card slot works. I can see the actual Raspberry Pi SD slot in there. Yeah, that fits in pretty nice. It'd be a little tricky getting out of there. I want to use tweezers or small flathead screwdriver to pull it out. But there's our case. There were some extra screws. I have no idea where these go. Maybe I can check online and find out, but I don't really think I need them because this thing feels pretty secure. And now I'm gonna test it all out by hooking it up to this old monitor that I have laying around and some old speakers. So, first thing I'll do is plug in this HDMI and then plug in the power.
power cable. Now on a normal Raspberry Pi, it would start up right then when you plug in the power, but this thing bypasses that and gives you a power button, which is actually pretty cool. And then let's find our audio jack, which is right here in the back. Sounds good. I should just be able to plug in my controller here. Just using a little USB controller. And press power. Let's see what happens. My SD card has RetroPie installed already. I put a couple of ROMs on there to test everything out. There we go. RetroPie gives you an option to pick which console you want to emulate depending on what ROMs you have installed. Uh, so let's say I wanted to play some Super Nintendo games. I've got Super Mario World here. And it's going to load up that emulator for Super Mario World, or for Super Nintendo, and then load the ROM into it. So yeah, everything's working great. What I think is crazy is that these Raspberry Pi 3s can actually play PlayStation 1 games. And the performance is pretty good. I mean, it plays just like an old PlayStation 1. This game brings back so many memories. Resident Evil. So yeah, the Super Nintendo works. PlayStation works. The Retro Pi operating system actually supports quite a few retro gaming consoles. You just have to find the ROMs to play them on. But now that we know how that works, let's test out some of the features of this case. Let's try the reset button. Say I want to just reset the console. Yeah, that works. Go ahead and just power it off. That also works. Make sure a different USB port works. This port works. This one works. And this one works. Yeah, all in all, everything seems to function just like it's advertised. I haven't tried the uh, Ethernet yet, but it looked like it was just a straight forward, like it just connected straight from the Raspberry Pi's Ethernet to this. There wasn't any controller or anything doing any logic that I could tell. So, so yeah, all in all, I gotta say, these little cases are adorable, and this project is super easy to put together. I think they'd make a great gift with the holidays coming up soon. Uh, even if you wanted to build it yourself and then give this as a gift to someone, or if you know someone who's more of a maker, who's into Raspberry Pi, and you wanted to just get them all the components to make their own, I think that'd be an awesome gift.
I should also mention that since it is just a Raspberry Pi in here, you can install any operating system on it. So you don't have to use it for gaming, you can actually install Ubuntu or uh, Raspbian and use it as a little desktop computer. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember that there's some links in the description if you do want to pick up one of your own Raspberry Pi cases like this. Until next time, bye!